Good morning, everyone. Woo! Cheerleaders are up early. OSU Mongo Slay, thanks so much for the subs. Appreciate y'all. How are y'all doing this morning? There are many people in first thing this morning. It's funny how Twitch works sometimes. So I'll run my intro for three minutes approximately to kind of get through the let people get through the ads so they don't miss, you know, this the stream starting. And then so like Tuesday at three minutes, there was like no one in here. And today, as soon as I click, we're live, just people in there. So it's pretty funny how that works. Um, none of that matters. So how are y'all this morning? Looks like it's a good morning. We got the sun out. Cal Riddle, thanks. Thanks for kicking off the hype train 13 months. That's awesome. Yeah, glad you're back, OSU. I'm glad I'm back after missing a day last week. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, it's super, super good. So, whew, 37. What, what did we 37 this time? 37 months? That's going to be Tony's glory day when he gets to 37 months so subscribed. Because we'll be here at least 37 months. I am very confident of that right now. So, um, side note, before, oh, 37 viewers. <laughs> I don't look at that number. So, like, I can see how many people. I just look at the chat. Um, but you you have the magic uh, the magic mod panel up um sidebar thanks jim for the bits shouting to get ahead of tony that's all that matters sidebar for you animal crossing players i have turnips at 489 this morning just opened my island for everyone in the slack but if you're interested you need to come <laughs> come see hang out <clears throat> see that's funny tony because my my screen literally shows me five viewers so that's why i never look at it because it's never accurate <clears throat> Like, it'll eventually catch up. Now I have, like, 42. So, yeah, I don't bother too much. So, um, I do eventually need an average of 75 viewers for, like, 24 hours a month, which if I could put in the time, we could totally do that because we're getting, we're getting up into the 60s, 60 average viewers, which is huge. Um, stream looks good, Jim. So, no drop frames, no issues here. So, y'all let me know if any, anything else happens. <clears throat> So yeah, we got people coming into the island while uh, I got the switch off to the side here. So I thought everyone in Slack is so nice um, about sharing their turnip prices. So I figured at least I can do is have my uh, have mine my island open while I'm streaming because nothing else is going on, and that's a decent price. Like I've gotten over 600 before, and I know a lot of y'all had. Yeah, mine are 489, 489. Yeah, I've been able to sell over 600 a couple times. Um, anything over 400, I'll usually just go ahead and sell so I don't have to deal with it, right? Because I may not be available during the time window that those are open. But hey, this isn't an Animal Crossing stream, but we'll probably talk about it from time to time. So yeah, Thunder Viking, if you need the, if you need the code, just tell me. Island's open for at least as long as we're streaming. And then uh, my stream resolution is weird. Yeah, that's got to be on your side. We're looking great over here. Full, full res, full quality. So yeah, we have some uh, some cool stuff to unbox today. Thunder Viking, uh, G L W N W, G L W N W. Good luck, West Northwest. <clears throat> I type it in, but I'd rather not have not not hanging out. Platinum released the video for the Sheun. Just like a let's just like a promo video like of the product, not of like, hey, this is why it's this expensive. <laughs> yeah, will it have a crack feed? They're having a moment, aren't they, Platinum? So I've I left uh, Platinum a, a message Tuesday, the US distributor luxury brands. Um they messaged me Friday saying, Hey, give me a call. We got some details after talking to Platinum. Calling them back. We're just playing phone tag, so I don't have all the details. But I've talked to talked to the retailers, and they're basically they're like the support is going to be that we'll replace the pen. So that's good. That I mean, Platinum has to at this point because, like I was saying yesterday on the podcast, I think this they, they've invested way too much in the Curidos to just say, "Wow, we really screwed this up. We won't do that again." They're gonna they're gonna like make it right and keep it going. I have full intention of that. What's up, Jesse? Um. <clears throat> a lot of things to open today i've been holding off on a few things um <coughs> excuse me and jesse reminded me i got something here from her her partner in crime anna reinert 
of the well-appointed desk. Feels like a party party every day up in here. It is a party. You can tell by my my demeanor. I got stamps, Jim. Yes, I ordered stamps. So I'm going to uh, give one away. Maybe two. We'll see. I got my... I'm carrying this, though, y'all. Ha ha. Ha ha. Sorry. I got to tease y'all a little bit. That's riding shotgun with me today. Y'all are going to get sick of seeing this pin after a while. It's so Lamy Safari, I can't even, I can't even handle. I have it. I'm gonna ship it Anna's uh, this afternoon. So uh, I talked to her yesterday. I'm gonna go ahead and ship it out. Should be today, if not, probably Saturday. So Anna's feels and looks amazing. They're really good. <clears throat> the lipstick on a pig pen. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. It's my lipstick on a pig pen though, and I'm happy about it. Is the question mark version to be given away? Yes, we just got to decide how we're going to do it. So confirmed. So if you look in Brooks's images, he has pictures of the question mark pin. It's pretty stunning. Um, yeah, it's really, really good. Let's see, should we bring that up? If y'all got a link to that that particular one, um, the red and the brown and black one. Shoot me a link. We'll pull it up on the on the screen. I don't want to stop and and mess with that right now, but um, if you pull it up and so we can talk about them, because I've shown enough of <laughs> all of our pins. I had a billion pictures. Jonathan had eight billion pictures, um, and it's just uh, it's cool. So Milky Provider, you just use big pins. There's nothing wrong with that. Big pins are great. You should use big pins. The Big Crystal specifically. Big Crystal is an awesome pen. Milky provider and thanks thanks for the follow too. I appreciate you. So yeah, just use big pens. It's totally cool. Big pens are welcome here. It beats your uh, generic bank or pharmacy uh, leftover generic pen. Bump. Thanks for the Twitch Prime, buddy. Hope you're doing all right. I need to get up to the ATL. I need to go. We need to go to lunch sometime up in the ATL. I don't get any good food down here. Once the restaurants get back to normal, you know, maybe next year <laughs> we'll we'll grab some grub. I'm missing Delia's. I'm missing Hankook. I'm missing all the good food that I don't get down here. So we'll we'll get that done. In art class, we haven't had a few days for Bix for cross hatching. Yeah, I mean the Bix are one of the best like artistic pens because you can you can shade with that type of ballpoint and oil ink like you can't do that with a jet stream right a jet stream ballpoint's a great writing pen if you just want to write a big pen is a good writer and a great art pen so it's very cool <clears throat> oh sky rest you don't have to you don't have to sub as long as you're here that's all that matters urushi bit crystal now now we're gonna get in real trouble Big round stick. Hey, it's got the big round sticks. Got like uh, pretty close to the same same uh, refill as the crystal. At least they used to. I don't know if they're they're the same now. But they're really good. Those are. I mean, you couldn't make a better choice for sixty pence for five bucks to get the big round stick. Like, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Paper made erasable. You're just trolling now, like like you do, Tony. That might be one of the worst pens ever made. I'm actually stunned, if you think back to it, how long the paper made erasable pen lasted for as bad as it was. <clears throat> so yeah, it's crazy. Your bank has the best needle ball ballpoint click pens that a nurse could wish for. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'd like to see a, a, a bank with a needle point. The box bic are cool. Yeah, I'm I'm clearly a big fan of that. All right, so um, first box here from Anna. She put all of her stamps and stickers on here for me. Look at all that. Special delivery, share the love, hashtag colorverse. What does that say? Hashtag colorverse size. It's it's double double stamps. I can't totally read it. Oh, there it is. Coloring over size. Coloring coloring over size. I got it now. That took me a minute, chat. Sorry about that. Coloring over size, which is my favorite size. Col o ring. Pilot friction Urushi. <clears throat> We could do that. Pilot friction is a good pilot. Vic, someone, uh, it's it's a not really a fair contest because there's only one 
legitimate contender, but wire cutter has a, a best gel, best erasable pen category, and it's the Pilot Friction, but like there's no competition in that category. <laughs> All right, Ana, give me a, uh, so in, in the, when you order things, you know how there's a little text field you can like put in a note? So in my in my note to Anna, I just said nerd on it, so she's making fun of it. And she said she threw in some extras for me. So I love her packaging is very on brand. Look at that. This is well appointed desk for those who are new to the chat. Um, oh yeah, good morning, foolish fox. We are the perfect distraction from work. We are unfortunately, um, your wallet might not approve of, of what's going on here, but uh, generally, uh, yeah. You saw this unboxing yesterday on Mike's channel? Cool. The Mike gets, the Mike gets some stamps. Yeah, I don't erase pencil either. So these are her two new stamps. Like the vase bottle and the ink pot bottle. Let me take them out of the plastic so you can see them. I just got in the 4x6 stamp pad at home yesterday. So there's the ink vase stamp. I get I got them without the handles. I kind of like the not the non-handly version. They they tend to have they tend to store better too, right? They're a little bit harder to to store with the handles on it. <clears throat> so that's that guy. So that's similar to the Sailor's uh, ink vase and the ink vase that you see from some of the other uh, Japanese vendors that are now using it. And then this one's more of the ink pot. Where do we get the Dodo code? Um, it's in the Slack, but I can give it to you here. It's uh, GLWNW. Good luck, West Northwest. So this is like a combo, this is like a Pelican little ink pot, which is a really good one. <clears throat> yeah, so I have my uh, my Brendan Hong stamp, which is, it's about that big. So I got the 4x6 stamp pad in yesterday. I saw it on the desk. Oh, good internet. I wish I had good internet. I have good internet here. If I had good internet at home, I would... Uh, Yes, I, so Tessa, I will fully take blame for any spouse, partner, sister, brother, parent that um, wants to know what your problem is. I will take the blame for you. So just point in my direction. And I'll apologize and say, that is what it is, right? <clears throat> oh, so here's a sample. Uh, sorry. There's a sample of the stamp on one of the coloring cards. It's so clean. I really like that stamp a lot. So, and then she sent me a bunch of stickers. I'm going to give away some of this stuff. So these will be part of the giveaway that I do on the blog. Um, oh, nice. So this is a, a letterpress of some old ink bottles, writing fluid. Letterpress card. It's pretty neat. Yeah, Milky Provider. It's like the same thing. Like anyone who can like nerd out about something like that, it's like tea or coffee or, you know, or pens or stationery. Like it's the same kind of vibe. So, yeah. My wife came in and saw Brad on my second monitor the other day and rolled her eyes and asked what I was going to order this week. Yep. <laughs> so I got uh, two of the coloring oversizes, one for each of the pad uh, for the stamps. Um so I'll be giving these away later later on the blog. Probably not next week, but down the line. So there's two of those. So you can do your ink samples with your ink bottle stamps. And then there's something in here I didn't order, so she threw me in some extras. So I'll pass I'll pass the love on to when I give away these give away this stuff soon. Sorry for the crinkling in the microphone. Any pass off your folding knife problem? Yes, that's um that's DP LaFall. That's who you need to, Cal. You need to uh, blame Patrick for your folding knife. What's everyone's favorite star? I'm glad this isn't dying. 
uh, yet, Sir Jerkface. So I got my rebel rebel plans. Wait, Imperial orders. I got Imperial orders and uh, dinosaurs. So she gave me some pads to give away too. So that's. <laughs> Mom fights asked me how's Brad today. As long as the day has stationary in it, I'm doing pretty good, which is pretty much every day. So I'm just doing pretty good. Oh yeah, Tony. Yeah. Um, who asked that cow? Tony Skull and Bream. Um, Gear Geeks Live, everyday commentary. That's who you can blame for any uh, any folding knife problems. He's tried to get me. He's tried to get me. So I've limited myself. This is pretty much like all I need. I don't really have any use for for any extra knives right now. Oh, Tony led you to me. That's funny. Tony's a good dude. I hadn't talked to him in a while. I need to need to reach out to him. All right. That was my, my well-appointed desk unboxing. All right. The the switch over here is going going cuckoo, so hopefully everyone's getting what they need over here. Hopefully it's 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 normal people from the Slack and people from here and not like worldwide. <coughs> um so Oh, I've got some really good stuff today. You have the pin problem. Your, your Bob has the knife problem. Yeah. Well, at least you can um, you can like run your excuses off each other. Well, like you can't complain about all these pins. Look at all these knives, right? Like, seems fair to me. All right. This is something different. That so Brian, my partner in spoke pins. Okay, let's have a spoke pin chat real quick. We're getting crushed for not having any inventory. Rightfully so. Our clips have been stuck for months in shipping from China. They're just completely stuck and they finally got free last week. I think they're supposed to show up Thursday. Is that today? It's supposed to show up today. We have like 400 pins ready for clips. Brian has like 400 pins put together ready for clips so we're gonna hope to have spoke pin inventory soon hopefully in the next week or two and we're gonna launch a new spoke pin model the shorty uh, it's gonna be called the roadie it's the mini pin spoke mini pin it's good it's done um, we're just waiting on clips so we're gonna launch that on the site directly it's not gonna be a kickstart or anything so we're just gonna add we're just gonna roll that into the regular uh, production uh, regular site and sell direct <clears throat> I think we'll have some without clips maybe we're talking about that I can't remember um, so Brian is always making stuff so he made me these he saw me using the paper clips the other day so he made me these paper would you call these paper clips like these are basically like your bookmark type style clips right so he had these made out of titanium, I think. So they're page markers, essentially. So we might sell these on the store. We don't know yet. So let's see how it works. <clears throat> That's how we roll, foolish fox. Oh, here's a notebook. So yeah. So it's like a little paperclip guy. Let's see here. So yeah works like that so pretty thin but substantial enough to not get bent you'll know it's there like it's not thin enough to where it's wafer thin where you won't lose it or break it or bend it but it's thin enough to to keep in the book I like this format this is something he just wanted me to uh, to test out so yeah and like we can we'll be able to do these in like different materials things like that Hey, good morning, podcast podcast planner. So, yeah, so he just like he just made me a stack of them to test out. Um, I'll send you one. I'll send you one, Sarah. Uh, the next time I ship you something, which might be a little bit, but yeah, that's just something uh, pretty cool that Brian did. Yeah, different colors. Like you can do them stainless and anodize them. I mean, burnt, uh, flame torch them. You can anodize them um, in aluminum. So this was just like the test run to see like do I like like Brian can make the things, but he wants to know, okay, is this the right thickness for you to use regularly, right? 
So something like this. I think it's pretty good. Like I like the size and shape of it. It's it's not too thin, not too thick. It's just right. <clears throat> so yeah, seems maybe too thick. I mean, it's borderline. But like when you put it in the book, it kind of uh, absorbs in there. Like that was my first thought too. Uh, head full of ideas. Now, like if you're going on like a, maybe a thin paperback book, it might be. But let's see here. So that's it closed on a, a regular, like a pocket notebook. So it does raise it up a little bit. Um, but like it hangs, it stays on the page pretty well, right? Like it's not going to come flying off. And that's all, that's just on one page thickness right there. It's not multiple pages, so there you go. <clears throat> I think that's pretty cool. So, is it gentle on the pages? Probably not. It's metal. Um, we'll see how. I'll have to put them into use to see, like, is it gonna fold and bang and like pressure? Like, will will there be a ridge on the page that you use it on? So that's something I'll need to test out. That could be something, um, you know, something we could talk about, and that might be a thinness thing or a weight thing, and see how it does. <clears throat> but um, it's definitely metal. So we'll look at that. But that's something good to test out. That's something I'll get you to test out as well. Um, this is not, this is like way, not even like testing it out, the fold and bang. So it's just one of those experiments that Brian's really good at. I got something from Mythic Pins. Page darts, yeah. So I got something from Mythic Pins. I don't know what's in here yet. So Brad from Mythic Pins, he's, a, he's in Georgia here with me. Um, he reached out to me. Uh, we've been talking on and off for a little while. Said he wanted to send me a pen to check out just to get my opinion on. Um, see if I could give him any feedback. He wasn't asking for a review. Um, wasn't asking me for anything really other than, hey, give me some feedback on my pen. So he sent me a pen. I have no idea what's in here. <clears throat> And uh, yes, pens look nice because he uses Brooks. Yeah, I like the the amount of Georgia people, like Iron Feather Creative, Mythic, who else in Georgia is using his stuff? Like all these people local ish to me, uh, using Brooks material. I'm all about probably because they can drive over to Brooks's house and pick it up. I'm guessing. I know Brian at Iron Feather can. Sister one one on Instagram. She said the cap is shedding material on the interior. On the interior of the cap, I could see that happening. I've seen that happen with other maker pins, right? Like the finish wasn't quite uh, good on the ins, like it wasn't polished on the inside of the cap type of thing. <clears throat> All right, so we have the whole mythic. The mythic mythic swag bag. I like the I like the stickers. And the card. I got paperwork. I got letters. So this is the paperwork. This is a letter to me. I will not read that out loud. But I, I do appreciate that his name is Brad and he's from Georgia. So um, that's very cool. Alright, let's see what we got. So Mythic Pinco sent me to this just for um, yeah, I've had a Franklin Kristoff do that, um, where it just wasn't polished all the way on the inside. Oh, so this is like wax sealed on there, stamp. That's pretty cool. Mm. Oh, look, there's the. Uh... So I guess that's what's in here. I'll I'll read that later. So it's orange though, orange spark. Orange something black. Alright. Ooh, fancy. Look at that. It's like a multiple 
section color section pen which I love so it's got black barrel orange window orange translucent cap swirly that's pretty cool I like the pen shape very much so slight tapers down taper down flat ends there's the cap material swirly pretty quick threads like people like what, what the one thing that you'll never hear me talk about in a review is how many turns it takes because it, it's not a thing that registers with me like if it takes one turn that's fine if it takes 10 turns that's fine some people really hate a lot of turns but this is pretty quick turn like two two quick spins uh looks like yovo nibs a uh, section matching the cap this is pretty clean i'm very happy with this I like the shape and I like the color a lot. I like the mix and match. Yo, Elizabeth, glad you could wake up today. Converter. So, threads feel good. So yeah, basically, I don't know if I'll review this pen. So I have this um, for basically feedback right so just wants to get my general feedback and in my initial impressions are pretty positive good morning lady Bren. <clears throat> so yeah fit finish polish everything looks good so yeah i'll play around this with this a bunch you'll see me take some pictures of this um we'll see what he wants to do if he wants me to review it or sh if i should review it um yeah, how's the step? Uh, let me go back because I didn't notice it, so it must be okay. The section's long enough to get you away from the step, and it's uh, curved. It's not sharped, right? It's got a little bit of edge on it. So there's my grip. You're pretty far away from the step. It's not a low step at all. Good morning, Void Wolf. It's it starts with an A, and I can't pronounce it. A Shilas A E S C H. Y L U S A Shilas. Can you read that? Probably not. How thick is the section? What do you want me to compare it to? It's very standard. It's a completely standard measurement. Not too thick, not too thin. If anything, it goes to the thin side, but it's very standard. Yes, thank you. Is that is that a god? Is that is that the mythic pen thing? I, I'm not up on my on my god, so <laughs> thanks, Lady Bryn. That's what we do here. We got all kinds of pens coming out today, so I got some unboxing stuff. So he, he threw an extra fine nib on here, which uh, is uh, my jam. So he knew what was up. He knew. Hey, I'm going to send Brad something to check out. Maybe I should make it orange and give him an extra fine nib. I think that's 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 priming the pump pretty well there. Mythic pins, Brad. That's why I'm going to have to start calling you Mythic pins, Brad, so people don't think I'm talking about myself so much. <laughs> Our auto mod. Auto mod was uh, digging your pronunciation. Gomir, thanks for the follow. Appreciate you. Why am I got not getting the the dings? Oh, that's why. Cause that's off. Oh, where did we do we miss? Yeah, whose question was that? Quick question, Void Wolf. So, quick question for the day: What's a converter, and what does it do? That's a great question. All right, see you, Tony. I need I need someone else to be a moderator in here. Does anyone want moderation keys? Um, I only have Tony as a moderator right now. I'd like to add one or two more moderators. You don't have any commitments, uh, other than just you can like. If someone says something stupid and comes in here and spam stuff, you can ban them. That's really all you do. So here you go, Void Wolf. This is a converter in a pen. So that's this piece here. So it comes out, right? So this is your nib and your nib section here. So the converter allows you to suck ink up into the bottle. So it's like a piston mechanism. So you have this down. You dip this in the nib. Then you suck up the ink like this. And then you're good to go. Right, I don't have an ink bottle here to um, to do it. So 
yeah, that's a converter. Now, the other, a cartridge is basically a replacement for the converter. A cartridge is this shape and you just pop it in here and it's already got ink filled up in there. And when you finish it, you toss it away. So those are the two main filling systems. And after that, you get into piston fillers, vacuum fillers, but those have a little more complex mechanisms, a um, little more, a little more um, expense as well. So I also fill them via syringe, Patrick. Um, it's frustrating because they don't work as well, right? You got You still have to. Uh, um, let me see something here. Let's see if that works. Okay, I can't mod anyone right now because it's not, uh, for some reason, it's not seeing my account synced up, but I will work on that. <clears throat> yeah, I totally syringe fill my converters. It's cleaner, right? That's the point, right? And there's some pens I don't want to dip in an ink bottle, right? I generally don't put my Nikaias in there, even though that would be totally fine. Um, you know, any type of uh, non-resin material like Micarta's G10s, those don't get dipped into to, uh, ink bottles and things like that. So it's totally cool. It's just going to take the pen longer to get started for obvious reasons. <clears throat> All right, I'm trying to, oh, let's try this. All right, Tessa, you have mod privileges. You don't have to do anything other than if you see com someone coming in here being an idiot, you ban them. And then you allow most of the chat to go through. Like if someone's, you know, like it'll do, it'll do like auto mod some like weird curse, like when we talk about pin terms that are like curse words or something like that, you just let them through. All right, mythic pins. Very happy with what that looks like so far. So. We got to give it some time, some testing, some carry, um, see how the threads hold up, uh, see how the comfort of the pen is. Um, uh, oh, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, like uh, it seems to be the, the island's been busy over here um, while we've been going, so I appreciate it. Yeah, I, it's that whole cleaning thing. What's funny is I don't mind, like if I get ink all over my hands, I don't care, but on certain parts of the pen, it drives me crazy. So I will tend to syringe fill if I can. I'll syringe fill a piston filler. Like I'm not embarrassed to say, like even though that's kind of defeating the whole purpose of a fill piston filler, some of them make it so easy to do. <laughs> you just go and then, hey, it's pretty clean. So some I just go for it and dip the whole thing in and bring up the ink especially like acrylic pens like if i'm using like my franklin christoph with a converter or like my pilot acrylic pens with a converter i'll pop them in oh except the con 70 converter forget that that syringe fail all the way what kind of pens do you like i like all kinds of pens so i just showed you a fountain pen this is a non-fountain pen i'm about to show you this is from Tactile Turn. So Will Hodges, good friend of mine, good friend of the community, has made some modifications to his, um, which model is this? I'll have to see which model this is. The the bolt action one. Gillette Pro Glide Ad. It's a hint, Jackie, it's a hint. Um, you feel Ecos and Goes dipping, but that's about it. Yeah, that's fair. So this is All right, let me see what I got here. Oh, see, that's the Pelican M205, I don't mind because Pelicans, however they engineer them, they're designed to clean so easily. Like the ink just like you can flush those out really 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 quickly, I find. Like I never have a problem cleaning the any Pelican pen because you could just drop it in and out uh, of the water. 
Yeah, uh, I think so. I think so, OSU. He said it's a new pen. Um, hope you dig the new new pens, Brad. We're excited about them. So what is... I don't know what it's called. So I got all this on the box. It's the side click. Yeah, so I guess it's this, the side clicker. But is that is that the name of it? Side click short. Let's do the full size first. So this is this is Will's Will's company, Tactile Turn. He's got a shop in Texas. He's really kind of uh, blown up and is you know really improved his shop. Um. So yeah, this is uh, cool stuff. I've I've always enjoyed Will's manufacturing. So Lady Bren, this gets down to like what you were talking about earlier. What type of pens do I like? The answer is yes. It's like I like all all pens. Oh wow. So this is a full size copper. Oh wow. So that's really cool. So this is a copper full. So this is I'm sorry. I got to keep going back to my thing. So we're calling this side click, tactile turn side click. So it's got the mechanism here. So it's a knock, and then a button. Ooh, that's nice. This is full bra uh, full copper, right? Yeah, copper. So this is good. This is coronavirus times right here, y'all. Um, the copper doesn't uh, hold your germs. Look how clean this is. I'm a, I'll put it on the other other cam. But look at that. Bam. Let me uh. Let me put up the other camera to see if you can see the um, the mechanism a little bit better. So the clip is really ni nice. I know it's not focusing well, but here's the mechanism in action. So it's very firm, engages the button, the button posts out a little bit more, right? There we go. And then nice <laughs> that's very cool um it's pretty much seamless like i don't know where to take this pen apart to um check out the uh, the refill yeah this makes sense that uh that oh i just tried to unclick it that way um that any doctors nurses anyone in the medical field using these copper ones like that's the way to go these days it's probably the way to go all the times at a hospital to be perfectly honest but that's kind of great it's it's copper and it's heavy i don't know that it's overly heavy i've definitely had much more much more head heavily um heavy barrel pins a foolish fox i do uh 10 a.m tuesday and thursdays 10 a.m eastern any chance you'll review one of ian's new copper pocket sixes maybe that's kind of not my jam. Like, this is the giveaway pin. So I'm going to give away the copper. Well, I keep doing this. I keep going, retract, retract. Oh, button. So I like it. I like the 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 mechanics of it. Oh, there's the seam. So the seam is here in the front end, which is where you change the refill. The full size, uh, there's not a spec sheet in the box. But I'm sure it's on the website. The full size pin takes the g2 barrel so you can use your juice refills i mean the g2 pilot g2 refill um so you can use the pilot juice but look at that you can't see that seam at all i know it's not <laughs> that was dumb <laughs> i know you can't see it oh, that's funny curious about the weight of the copper on the pocket six yeah copper is generally not my jam so i asked him to do copper because i think this is the perfect giveaway pin so i asked him for this one to do a giveaway um and then i asked for a different one to review so uh hey i saw it better sarah back off that's all that matters <laughs> i could totally see it i don't know what your problem is you don't have x-ray vision <laughs> Good morning, Memo. So, pretty cool. So the second one is the short model. So there's the full size, the short, and the mini. I went with the short for my review model in titanium. Oh, I need to get the other one back out so you can compare the sizes. 
So this is going to be my review model. It's titanium. Same mechanism. Button. Oh, it's really clean. That's really well done. This clip is clip is rock solid. Yep. Um, refill on these, I think, still fits the, the G2 size. So, like, I can get my beloved juice in there, or is this Parker style? Okay, so Parker style in this one. So, this is the Schmidt 9000. So, I can put one of the Jetstream refills that I like in here, or the Oto. Um, yeah. So, let's get these, compare these in size real quick. So yeah, the mini one takes what refills? I'll have to go look it up. I don't know offhand. Mini has the Pilot G2 Mini. Thank you. So let's see. There's the difference between standard. Let's see. Standard and full size. So what about a half an inch difference between the two lengthwise so I haven't tried a mini yet but this is the uh, short the shorty these boxes right there we go <clears throat> Yeah, the cop copper pocket sixes look good. I just don't know. Like, the one... Uh... <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks for your little thicky. Oh, that's hilarious. Um, the copper... Uh, might be too heavy for me in the pocket six. So, the shown design 01, he sent me in stainless steel was the first shown that I reviewed. And it was too heavy for me. And I like stainless steel pens. So with the pocket pens, I don't need all of that weight. Even though I have a Kaveco Steel Sport that I love, that's kind of the max weight. Um, yeah, the zirconium ones, those are so expensive. Like I, one of these days I'll get, I'll pony up for a zirconium, but uh, not right now. But this is just a great mechanism. I, I don't even know what to say. It's pretty cool. I kind of want to take it apart, but I'm kind of worried. Cause I gotta, re I'm gonna review this pen. I told him I'd make sure to review it. But yeah, very happy, very clean. Like the the machining on this is really really good. So yeah, very happy with this. I will I will take it apart for the review, but I want to make sure I get pictures and stuff before <laughs> before I break it. <laughs> You just have an Eco and a Plazier. What pen should you buy next? Those are two really good pens. Like, you shouldn't force yourself into buying something if you don't need it. Because when you have an Eco, that's a really good pen. You know, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish next. Um, do you want a different style of nib to, um, to write with? You know, do you want uh, a different feel in the barrel? You know, do you want to dabble in unique materials like the mythic pens that I was just showing right you know do you want something that fits your personality style wise so there's a million different ways we could go from the eco and the and the plays ear you know it's impossible to say this is next what's your favorite pen um I like a lot of fountain pens I like fountain pens by sailor and pilot and platinum um, all of those are really, really good quality pens. Great craftsmanship. Uh, EPL returning on the 17th, like in three weeks, the 17th. That's crazy. I would love to see that. Oh, Chaos Pen. That's your next pen. That's the one. Chaos Pen. Interesting. I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's no fans. But that's quick. Are they going to try to get the whole the full year schedule in? Sorry, this is a digression that I need to have. <laughs> are they going full schedule for the remaining? I don't know. What do they got? Like eighteen weeks left or something? Pretty heavy schedule. <clears throat> so yeah, like foolish fox. It's a great question, but it's a super hard to answer. Kaveco Sports a great choice. Pilot Prayer is a great choice. 
um, if you like the plazier nib because Japanese nibs, which you have on Japanese size nibs, which you have on the plazier, is different in line width than the what we'll generally call German uh, style nibs on size nibs on the Eco, right? So if you have an extra fine Eco and an extra fine plazier, the line width for those are not even going to be close to the same width, purposefully so. Are there certain pins that you prefer for different situations? Absolutely. So I'll just do a lot of general writing um, with anything, like any, any fountain pen, any gel pen. But if I'm doing sketching or drawing, I want a finer point. So I use any, everything from 0.3 micro gel ink pens to mechanical pencils um, to I use a lot of drawing pens, like you've heard of the Secura Pigma Micron. So I use those type of art markers a lot. So, and then I go into like crazy custom pens, like this purple Lamy Safari that was custom made, right? So it runs the gamut. It's a lot of feel, it's a lot of mood, it's a lot of style, right? It's a lot of things that go into that. But if I'm taking notes, I'll do what I'll use whatever. If I'm writing something that I want to show off the characteristics of either the nib or the ink, I'll use a wider nib, like a stub nib, um, which gives you, like the way my handwriting is, it gives you a square line variation. Like I have block print, right? So it gives you a, a wide downstrokes and thin horizontal strokes. So yeah, Foolish Fox, don't make that jump. You can hold off on those. The Retro 51 fountain pens are pretty good, if you like that style. And the Kaveco, uh, the Metal Barrel Kavecos, I definitely recommend. They're some of my favorites. Those are all good choices. Then you get into the Pelican, like M205s, which you're getting over 100 bucks then. Um, but those are a piston filler, but you have your Eco. It's like, do you really need that? I don't know. That's a super tough question. <laughs> All right, what else we need to talk about today? I got a little bit of time. I got a, I did uh, the regular podcast yesterday. Did a Friends of the Show for PINAC members last night. I got another Friends of the Show at 1 o'clock today. <clears throat> um, and then I'm guesting on Mr. Mike Henley's show at 5 o'clock today. If you like the Eco, you could check out the fi 580. Yeah, bigger, bigger, better, faster, stronger. Maybe not better, but bigger, bigger ink capacity, a little bit different style. <clears throat> yeah, I I browsed through that Topo sale. I didn't need another bag. Uh, the Rover's a good a good choice though. I've had a Rover, I think, in the past. I think I sold it to get the Mountain briefcase at the time. This was years ago, but it's a it's a cool design. You'll like that. It's very, very well done. I think I sold it to Hey Matthew, then Hey Matthew sold it to someone else. I don't know. <laughs> it's a good bag, though. <clears throat> yes, Jim is a mini bagger. The prices were great, too. I totally, totally down with those prices. Mm. Trying to see what else I got here. I think that's pretty much, pretty much all the stuff for today. So if we got any, uh, oh turquoise orange, yeah. I think I had the red blue. That's what I sold to, uh, to Matthew. I haven't used uh, Evergoods yet, to its full capacity. Yeah, I haven't bought a bag in a while. Since I bought, I bought the um, Flint and Tender wax canvas one. Yeah, I could show you. That's the last bag I bought. Traditional shape. Uh, wax canvas materials and leather. This is like a way out of my style bag, but I'm very happy with it. Yeah, I definitely want to see the Evergoods. So bags is a whole another thing we could get into, but um, I like this because of the shape and the materials. So I was very, very happy with that bag. One day if I ever... Uh, Oh no, Barbus, I'm a huge, huge mechanical pencil fan. 
So I like the Pentel Sharp series, the P series, like the P205, P207, which is the standard traditional Pentel Sharp. I like the Pentel Carry, which is their capped uh, mechanical pencil. I like the Rotring 600. Um, I like the Uniball Kurutoga roulette model specifically. The um, Caran Dash fixed pencil, I love that pencil. That's a clutch style pencil with a two millimeter lead. Um, I also like the Alvin Draftmatic is a really good pencil. So yeah, I love mechanical pencils. Opinions on bolt actuation pens? I'm a fan. I'm pro bolt actuation. Here's a button bolt, right? I am pro uh, bolt action pen. So this is a tactile turn. Um, I like, uh, what's Kelvin's name? Kelvin's brand? Urban. Why am I blanking? I can't remember. Urban Survival, yes. Urban Survival Gear. Uh, Kelvin makes great bolt action pens. So those are that and the tactile turn, are the ones I use the most for bolt actions. Uh, Max Madco doesn't make the one that I used to recommend all the time, which was really, really good. I've never, I've never been able to pull the trigger on an 800 because I don't like the gold trim on the black with the black and the red even though I like the style, but I haven't been able to justify like the $50 price increase. Like that math doesn't work into my head for what you, for like the, the, the pipe retraction mechanism is the difference, right? Yeah. The retracting sleeves. Nice. Is it, is it $70 versus $30? Nice. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe if it's that important to you for sure. <laughs> But like I have the Uni Shift Pipe Lock, which is which is one of my favorites, right? And that's like a fourteen dollar pencil. If like the pipe, uh, even though it's not the feel of the eight hundred, right? Um, I can't use an Architect nib all day. All right, see, even supposing, so I like Architect nibs in small doses. My handwriting looks better with a stub or a cursive italic. My handwriting looks good with an architect, but I have to think about writing with an architect nib. The architect can't handle the pace as well that I write with, right? I generally write pretty fast. And sometimes with the architect, you have to slow down. So I have to be committed to slowing down if I'm gonna use my architect nibs. Schmevelin, thanks for the sub, 17 months. Thank you. Um, a Moy, thanks for the follow, appreciate you. Oh, Tessa, any word on your Sailor Mount Fuji? Yes. So guess what? Um, Bung Box is no longer using uh, EMS out of Japan to ship. They have cut over to DHL, and they will be shipping my pen ASAP now with their new shipping platform using DHL. DHL is when I was comparing getting the stuff from Australia versus getting the stuff from Japan. G DHL gets to me from that part of the world in less than two weeks. So if they are good to go with DHL, we're good. It also depends on where DHL ships through and if there's a warehouse back backlog, which is where our stuff from China for spoke pens got stuck at DHL's warehouse for over a month. But coming from coming from Japan, hopefully it's not going to go that direction to to get to us. Jada Costa, thanks for the follow. Appreciate you. You want an architect so much. I it, it's wonderful how it makes your uh, makes your handwriting look. And I love using my architects. I don't need more than the. I have like one broad architect nib and one micro architect nib, and that's it because I just won't use them consistently all day long. I'll use them specifically for specific instances, if that makes sense. It doesn't mean I love them any less. It just means that I can't use them all day long and I really think it has to do with the pace. So, 
Amoy, first you thought this was a crazy cult, but I'm generally interested in now. Big pin guy here. Well, it is a crazy cult. Like, like, don't be mistaken. We are, we are a little bit crazy. Yeah, Robert Oster uses DHL. Like, I got more uh, fire on fire. Rich stinks. Rich sticks. Rich stinks. <laughs> That's not your name. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Um, well, you can. What you need to do, Patrick, is uh, buy a loose nib. Like, look at Custom Nib Studios. Look at Gina. Gina's site. Uh, she'll do Yovo Architect nibs. Um, just sell them loose for like 30, 40 bucks, something like that. So what's my favorite pen of all time? That's a more difficult question than me just trying to name my favorite pen or top or top three pens that I currently own. What's your favorite pen of all time takes on a different context that has to have some kind of like historical meaningful value to it um, as well as like, you know, personal preference and enjoyment. Like would I say the Pilot Murex, you know, that might be my favorite pen of all time just because of the design the aesthetic but it was made in 1970s in japan right and then i also got um you know i also it was given to me so it's there's a story behind it right so is it the greatest pen of all time you know like for my favorite um custom nib studio.com yeah so there's all kinds of uh I don't have a blade or predator grind yet. I have the micro architect from Mark. Um, I have a posting nib from Mark, but I don't have a blade or a predator. One of the ones, I think it was the blade Turk that actually was too scratchy for me. Also, if any of those are the double sided ones, I don't do double sided nibs. Yeah, so 55 on the nib that you provide, but some nib like Gina at Custom Nib Studio will just sell a pre-made Yovo number no. six nib with a grind on it. If she has any in stock, she may not. As just like, you don't have to send a pen. So Predator is the cross style point. So maybe one of those I didn't enjoy because it was too scratchy. So the blade is then what I need to oh 70 for the pre-made architect. Okay, I didn't realize they were that expensive. So maybe the blade is the one that I need to try, Jim. That would be more my style. Even though I like the micro tiny fine stuff. There was one of his that I tried that I did not enjoy. Uh it was too too scratchy. Just like when I try I sat with Nagahara and got my needle point. Um that my other option was I don't know, one of those like real real pointy tip ones that i, I just couldn't do <laughs> 70 is about on on track yeah so just be i i just i just propose that people be careful when going into an architect nib like you may not dislike it but you may not love it as much as you think um that's why i try to bring one when i go to pin shows and things like that for people to test out just to give them an, an, an idea like they're very good at their very specific job do you want to do that all day long i don't know up to you so there you go you don't know how i can write with such a fine nib i just enjoy it i don't know the smaller the better like i my i've i've moved up a little bit in like all fine all the time right i like this Lamy Safari, the Lamy Safari EF nib is like a Japanese medium nib, and I love that. Like, that's a great size for me. Like, but if you say Lamy Safari EF, you're like, oh, that's so tiny. That's actually kind of a huge nib, right? Yes, things happen that prevented us from pin shows. <clears throat> yeah, I just, like, I I preach caution on the, on the architect nib, especially for like your favorite pen and getting that done on there without having an experience with it. You just have to be cautious of that. Try to be, try to be smart. Because that's not something you're going to be able to change. And then what did you think, Patrick? 
because I think the $8 Plumix nib is the this pilot's best stub nib. It's a 9 or 1, 0.9 or 1.0 millimeter width, and it's sharp on the edges. Like, it's not, not like, super stubby, and it's not super cursic italic -y, and it's very, very good. The VP stub is one of the worst nibs I've ever used. I will agree with you on that, Jim. I don't know what happened with the vanishing point stub nibs but i was like sweet i'll get a stock stub nib for i can just buy the nib unit for the vanishing point use it get the stub nib i tried it and tried it and tried it and it was not good i don't even know if i still have it i probably do it's just probably sitting in a, a case somewhere <clears throat> Yeah, so I have a, um, so in my Stilo, one of my Stilo art pens, I chose the, what do they call that on the, that size, like the 912 size pilot nib, is that like a 15? Yeah, it's the SU, but yeah, SU. So that is in, I have the uh, Kimpaku Stilo art, and that's a great nib. It is, they, they, they did not execute the, uh, Sue tab, thank you. Yes, Sue, Sue tab. They did not execute the stub nib on the vanishing point as well as their uh, SU nib. That's a fact. For sure. Exactly, uh, Patrick. My Plumix was bought so I could pull that nib and it lives in a prayer now, which I use to review ink a lot. Do you have a preference on nib color? Like, would you per, prefer an all gold look or stainless steel? That's a good question. I prefer the steel and silver looking nibs. So they'll call them just regular steel, stainless steel. On the gold nibs, you can get them rhodium plated. So they still have that silver look. Or you can get a two-tone, you know, rhodium and gold. I like that look all over traditional full gold. But I like those two. Like, I have some of each. My preference is your steel or silver looking nibs. Absolutely. Yes, so the Plumix and the Penmanship nibs, I bought those pens so I could put them in Metropolitans or Preras because those steel nibs are so good. They're cheaper than if you tried to buy the nib or source the nib itself, so it's really good. So the, the Penmanship has their extra fine steel nib, which they don't offer that much outside of just the Penmanship. And these are what, like $5, $8 in the case of the Plumix. I think the penmanship is cheaper. You just buy that pen, steal the nib, and the platinum, the Pilot nibs are really, really easy to swap. They just slide on and off. You don't have to do too much to them. <clears throat> so it's very, very good. All right, y'all got anything else for me today? We'll probably wrap it up soon. I got to go get ready for another another podcast. Oh, I haven't bought the last week tonight stamps. But I just blew through so many stamps. I probably just need to go ahead and order again. The prayer is overpriced compared to Pilot's own options, and they've actually lowered the price because it was really overpriced. They could used to be a $50 pen. Now it's more like a $35 pen. <laughs> yeah, and the prayer is cheaper if you buy overseas. Who's friend of the show is posting today? That's a great question. I don't think I can pull it up from here. Let me see if I can let me see if I can pull it up. Yeah, I have the clear prayer with the the blue.
Most underrated pilot pen is the E95. I'm not going to disagree with that. All right, I got to look up my password real quick. Jim did a great friend of the show. Let's see here. Password guy. Let's try that again. <clears throat> oh, come on. Yeah, I wish they do more rhodium uh, E95s. That would be amazing. All right. I record so many of these. I'm so far ahead. I can't think of who's next, and I usually don't schedule it till this afternoon. All right, there we're in. We're in. I'll be able to tell you. It would be, ooh, Urban Hafner. That's going to be a good one. So, yeah, Urban's, uh, Urban's friend of the show will be out this afternoon. We talk about FPC.inc, of course. So yeah, there you have it. Who was asking? It's been so long. I didn't see who was asking that before. Oh, Beth. Yes, Urban Hafner. So you're not up yet, Beth. Close. Gaining on it. No, I I more than dabble in pencils. Woodcase pencils, mechanical pencils, all pencils. I'm trying to think, is there anything I don't dabble in in the stationary world? I have most of it covered. Most of it I use regularly. Um, yeah, like I'm not anti anything really stationary wise. So yeah, if you have pencil questions, bring them. If you have any stationary questions, bring them. Paper questions, anything. Late July, not that long. <laughs> Although, maybe July though. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. I could tell you. So yeah, I'm happy to answer any stationary questions. You know what I don't do a lot of is letter writing, but I use the tools for letter writing. What mechanical pencil would you recommend with a plentiful eraser? I used to use a Sanford Logo 2 uh, Tombow Mono. They have a big honking eraser and an excellent eraser on top of that. Tombow Mono, sh mono Shaker, Tombow Mono Regular. They have an extra large eraser, and the Tombow Mono Eraser uh, itself is excellent. You can find those at Jet Pens and probably other places, and they're very inexpensive. They're like six bucks. I mean, it's not cheap, but like for what that pencil is, it's exceptionally high quality and has the biggest eraser that I know of that actually works well on any mechanical pencil. Yep. I have a review on the blog. You can check them out. Penanic.com. Just look up Tombow Mono. And they'll be they, they use that name a lot, so um just look up that. There it's it's really, really high quality. Highly recommended. All right, that's a wrap, gang. I got to run so I can eat lunch before I record again this afternoon and then record again again this afternoon. Um, busy day today, so thanks for hanging out. Um, I'll be back Tuesday. Uh, we'll see what we talk about then, and uh, I'm sure there'll be plenty plenty of things uh, that happen between now and then that we can chat about. So uh, thanks for hanging out. I really appreciate you all hanging out. This is fun for me. I hope it's fun for you all. I like having these conversations. Again, I wish I could do it all day long. But I can't. I got to go today. So um, I'll catch y'all later. Um, if you need me, you know where to find me on Twitter. Um, if you don't, go to penanic.com. You can find all my stuff there. See y'all.